What's up, y'all? Today, we're going to learn how to build a minting site for video NFTs on Polygon using the LivePeer Video NFT SDK. Let's get started. Welcome, welcome to GM, as they say. It's early. So, I scaffolded out a React application using Create React App, gutted a few things from inside the main app, and also added some styles inside of the app.css. Here's a quick look, but there's not a lot going on. Now, I'm going to add a couple folders. First, it's going to be a components folder where all of our components will live. And second, a utils folder. Inside of utils, I'm going to create a file called mint.js. This is going to be the function that actually mints our NFT. Now with our file ready, we're going to import the video NFT SDK from life here video NFT. And I'm just going to write out a couple of API options. This is just a few pieces of data that the SDK will need to actually work, mainly the authorization key, which we'll get from live peer in a bit, as well as specifying an endpoint. Since we don't have a backend and we're not going to be using our own backend, we're going to use a prod API point provided to us. Now let's start writing out our function. You write export const mint, and this is going to be an async function that will take a few arguments. So I've added five arguments here. We're only going to be focusing on the first three for now, the chain ID, title, and the NFT metadata. The other three are all set state options that will be coming in from React, and we'll worry about those a little bit later. These next lines of code are going to help us with a little bit of setup. First, I'm going to pull out the Ethereum object out of the window, and then I'm going to create this minter, which we get from the video NFT SDK, by passing in the API options, as well as the Ethereum object and the chain ID. Last thing we want is just a reference to the file we want to upload, and the SDK actually gives us a nice little uploader for that purpose. I've added a little to do here just so we remember to come back and actually update the app state using those setters. Next up, we have to prep our asset to actually upload over to IPFS. Once that's done, we can now create a variable called IPFS. And we're once again going to leverage the methods available to us from the SDK to export that over to IPFS. We're going to get the asset.id which we created on line 15, and pass it the NFT metadata. Now, once everything is uploaded over to IPFS, we can actually mint our NFT. To do that, we need to create a transaction. Just like before, the LivePeer SDK takes care of all this for us. We can call the minter.web3.mintNFT function and pass it the NFT metadata URL we get back from IPFS. Finally, we're just going to grab the info for the NFT, and we're, for now, just going to return that. We'll do a little bit more with this later. So back inside of app.js, I'm going to add a few more things so we can actually get our UI hooked up and ready to go. First off, I want to import useState from React. I'm going to be tracking three pieces of state. Chain ID, which we'll get in just a bit, as well as the address. And the app state, which is initially going to be in the state of ready to mint. This just signifies, hey, you're connected and it's time to mint your awesome video NFT. Let's create our first component. Inside of the components folder, I'm going to create a file called connectwallet.js. As the name suggests, it's going to be connecting to our user's wallet. Now, the reason we need to do this is so we can detect if this user is on the Polygon mainnet or the Polygon testnet. That way, the SDK knows where to mint the NFT. I'm going to import ethers from ethers, and I'm going to take two props, set chain ID and set address, which we declared in the parent. I'm also going to declare this handle wallet connect function where I check if there is an Ethereum object in the window. And if so, I'm going to request access to that person's account, grab their address, and grab the chain ID. This chain ID will differ depending on which network they're actually connected to. One UX improvement you can make here is creating another alert, letting the user know that they must be connected either to the Polygon mainnet or Mumbai testnet. Now that that's been set up, what I want to do is display this button whenever there is no address saved to state. So I wrote in a conditional to check if there's an address. And if there is not, we're going to use this connect wallet function and pass it those specific props that it needs. Then I'm just going to have another conditional which checks if there's a chain ID. If there is, we're going to be able to connect and display this connector to the blockchain message. Now let's create a new component that is going to actually allow us to both view and create our new video NFTs. We're just going to call it nft.js. Inside of nft.js, I'm just going to import, once again, some use state from React. Lots of state going on in this application. 
and I'm going to declare a const NFT and it's going to take us some props. These props are just going to be checking on the app state, setting the app state, and looking up the chain ID. This component is going to track two pieces of state. First, the message, which we're going to supply to a loader that we're going to build in just a bit, and the NFT info that we're going to get back for our mint function. I'm going to have this component temporarily return an H1 for NFT info, but let's go ahead and create the component that needs this message. So a new component is going to be called loader. And that loader is just going to be a nice little UI component that we display. It's going to take the message that we declared before, and it's going to have this div with the loader class name. I've added some CSS instead of app.css, which will give us a nice little animation for that loader. Awesome. So with that set up, we're going to create a new component called mintform. This mintform is going to take in some information from the user about their new NFT. So that information is going to include things like the title, the description, as well as some traits that they can add to their NFT. We're going to, once again, use state, use this title and description um, set states. And I'm just going to hard code in this trait of like author as well as my own name. Reason being, we're going to keep this a little bit simple. If you want to allow your users to create traits, you can add additional options to the form to do that. So the return statement in this component is going to give us a form. This form is going to have a couple of inputs. The first input is going to be the NFT title. And we're just setting the value to the set uh, the title state that we have up here. And on change, we're just updating that title based on the e.target.value of this input. We're going to do something similar for the second input, but this one's going to be a text area in case our users want to create a longer form description. I've already set some rows and columns for this, but you can adjust this to however you want it to be. Finally, we're going to have this button, which is going to be our submit button, which is going to let our users choose a video and mint. It's going to call that mint function I imported on line two from our utils. On submit, we're going to have a handle submit function, which I wrote here. It's going to prevent the browser from refreshing, which is that e.prevent default. And then the mint function is going to actually take the chain ID, the title, description, traits, as well as the three state setters that our mint function needs to fully hook up to the UI. Now with our mint form completed, let's go ahead and save this and make sure that we're actually exporting it out. Once it's exported, we'll head back over to nft.js and we're going to import it here. I want to make sure this mint form displays whenever the app state is set to ready to mint, which is the initial app state that we start off with after we're connected. And we're just going to pass down all of the props that it needs. Next, I'm going to create an additional conditional. This conditional is going to display our loader. So whenever our app state is set to minting, we're going to have the loader and display that message. We'll set that app state in just a bit. And our final conditional, whenever the app state is set to minted and there's some NFT information available, we're going to display the contract address of the NFT, an OpenSea URL, as well as a video kind of just showcasing the NFT that we just minted. All of this is going to be available within our NFT info object, which we'll get from our mint function. Now we've got our different UI components set up and all of the different pieces of state that need to be sent over to our mint function. So let's head back over to mint.js and hook everything up once and for all. First thing that I want to do is set the app state to minting. This will bring up that loader. Next, I'm going to set the message to creating asset. That's this line right over here. Once that asset is created, we're going to export to IPFS. Once that's exported to IPFS, we're going to mint the NFT. And finally, we're going to get NFT information. This is all really just to show the user what's going on. Finally, we're going to set the NFT info to be that NFT info object as well as the IPFS object. That IPFS object is going to give us the URL of the video to actually display in our UI. Back in our app.js, I'm just going to replace the initial H1 that we had and put in the NFT component. Let's test this out. We hit connect wallet and nothing happens. This here is one of the reasons why I like using TypeScript, so I can tell what the issue is more quickly. But what the issue was, was a capitalization error. With that being fixed, we can now 
create a .env file, which is going to house our live peer API key. In order for us to get the live peer API key, we've got to log into our dashboard. So we head to livepeer.com, head over to dashboard, make sure you've signed up and created an account, click on developers, and here you can create your API key. You'll see that I created one earlier, but let's go ahead and create a new one. I'm going to hit create key. I'm just going to call it test key and make sure that I allow cores access from localhost 3000. Once that's created, I can copy my key and drop that over inside my env file. Now that I've added the .env file, I do need to restart my server. Now we should be all set and ready to mint our NFT. So in the NFT title, I'm just going to drop in a little title, a little description. Um, the NFT that I'm actually uploading is going to be a demonstration of one of the very first tutorials that I created, which was on connecting your wallet inside of a React application. So just in case you want to buy this NFT, it will be available on OpenSea. So now you see you have this creating asset with this nice little loader. Once the asset has been created, it will then be shipped off over to IPFS. And this was all part of those little set um, states that we added inside of the mint function. Now for minting the NFT, the transaction comes up. I hit confirm after paying a little bit of gas. And once that's been minted, it's going to give me the NFT information. So we've got the video here, the contract address, as well as the link to get over to OpenSea. Now, occasionally when you open the OpenSea link, you're not going to see all of the information right away. OpenSea does take a little bit of time to update everything. But if you refresh, we'll see that everything was minted and this NFT, this video NFT, is now available for purchase. So this is a starting point that you can take to create your own video minting site. Try out something different. Maybe you try to do some video recordings in the browser and mint those as an NFT. If you do end up building something, drop a link in the comments below or tag me on Twitter at Rahat Codes. Would love to see what you build.